So now we have a fully working login and registration system using Laravel 45 to power the back end. We can also make sure users are verified. The next thing we're going to look at is two factor authentication. And this is where the user needs to enter a code from an external source, usually on a mobile phone, for example, before they can actually authenticate the login. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do to actually get this working because there's quite a few components within the flow of verifying a user. So if we just expand out our user model that we're dying and dumping on here, if you're used to Laravel in the past, you'll probably notice two new columns on this user table. And they are two-factor secret and two-factor recovery codes. So each logged in user needs to be able to create these secrets and codes. And then we also need to set our model up so it knows that the user needs to authenticate using two-factor authentication before we allow them into the application. So over in the roots file, I'm just gonna be using the home page for this. But obviously in a real application, you'll probably have this hidden in some sort of in some sort of dashboard or some sort of settings page for each user. But as I'm just demoing this, I'm just going to put it into the home page. So I'm going to do a return and I'm going to return a view. And I've not made this yet. Um, I'm just going to call it home. The next thing we need to do is make sure our model is aware that we want to use two factor authentication. So under app models user. We need to make sure it's using two factor authenticatable. Now at the top of your model, this might have already been included for you during the scaffolding. But if it's not, then don't worry about it. You can just bring it in by doing a use and you want to use Laravel backslash fortify backslash two factor authenticatable. And then finally, we want to use it. So under use inside of the class, we just want to use that two factor authenticatable. So Laravel now knows that the user needs to authenticate using two-factor authentication before it allow the user into the application. The next thing we're going to do is actually build up our homepage view where we're going to give the user the option to enable and disable two-factor authentication and it will also provide them with the QR code need to scan and the recovery codes. So all I've done here is scaffolded out a quick skeleton layout with a simple card with a card body. And as I said in previous videos, I'm using Bootstrap, but you can use any framework you want. The front end framework is mostly irrelevant. And then all that gives us is a blank spot for us to put our content into. So the first thing we're going to do is display a message out to the user, letting them know if they have if they had two factor authentication enabled or whether they have it disabled. So we can check on the user model for that two factor secret table that I showed you in the die and dump of the user model and just see whether it's set. So we can call the blade directive if, and we can say if not, so we want to use auth and we want to get the current logged in user. And we want to see whether that two factor secret has been set on the table or not. And if this is true that it hasn't been set, then we can say you have not enabled two factor authentication. Otherwise we can just say else here and we can say you have two factor authentication enabled. Let's just end that if. Now, if we check this over in the browser, we can see here you have not enabled two factor authentication, which is correct because at the moment, by default, them two user columns are empty until we actually enable this. So let's create a button that the user can press so they can enable the two factor authentication for their account. So underneath here, let's just create a form. We're going to give this a method of post. And for the action, we're going to go to a URL. And this is because at the time of recording, at least, Laravel 45 doesn't have a named route for this. So we have to actually just go directly to the URL. And we're going to go to user forward slash two hyphen factor authentication. And then as with all forms in Laravel, we just want to pass in our CSRF token. And then all we need is a button of some sort to submit this. So I'm going to give it a button, a type of submit. And then the text, I'm just going to put enable. So I'm just going to apply some styling to this button. But again, this is completely optional. So I'm just going to give it a button and a button of primary just to make it look a little bit better. Now over in our browser, we can see we have our enable button, which sends a post request off to user two-factor authentication. Firstly, Laravel Fortify is going to challenge the user to enter their password again. 
So this is something they couldn't just enable by mistake. So we do need to set up in our Fortify service provider a route for the confirmed password. And then once the password is confirmed, it's going to populate the two fields in the user table. And then finally, it's going to redirect back to this page where we can pick up on that return and display the user their QR code and their recovery codes. So under app providers, let's open up our Fortify service provider. And in the same way that we did with the previous features, let's just add a new entry here. So we're going to call Fortify and we're going to call confirm password view. And then we're going to pass in a closure here and we're going to return a view and I'm going to call this one in the auth folder and I'm going to call it password confirm. So when a user tries to enable this two factor authentication now, they're going to be redirected to this page where they need to enter the password. Now let's just create that page. So I've just copied our login page because it's pretty much the same thing. There's only a couple of things we need to change. So the first thing you need to change is the action. And you want this to go to the URL of user confirm hyphen password. Obviously make sure the method is post and make sure you're passing in the CSRF token. And we only need one field this time and that has to have a name of password for this to work. And then obviously I've given this page a title of confirm your password to make it clear what it is. Now you can put as much as you want on this page, but as long as you've got them things as a minimum, then this will work. So once the user has entered their password and Laravel has confirmed that's the password, it's going to pass it back to Fortify and Fortify is going to fill in them columns for us in the database. It's then going to return us back to our home view where the user clicked the enable button and it's going to send them a status down that it has been enabled and then we want to show them the QR code so they can actually scan the QR code into their application of choice. So back it over in our home view, I'm just going to come underneath the submit button and I'm going to check for that status. So I'm going to do an at if and I'm going to check the session and does it have a status and is that status equal to two hyphen factor hyphen authentication hyphen enabled. I'm just going to close this if off with end if. So if the user has been redirected back here and it is enabled, let's just let them know that you have now enabled two-factor authentication. Please scan the following QR code into your phone's authenticator application. And then finally, we just need to show them the QR code. We can do this with Blade and we need to escape this. So we use the double explanation mark and a single curly bracket. We're going to jump into the auth facade again and we're going to get the current user. And then there's a method on here now called two factor QR code SVG. And this is the method that generates the SVG for the QR code. And then it'll show it out on the screen if there's a status that they've enabled two factor authentication. So also while we're here and the users enabled their two-factor authentication, we probably want to show them their recovery codes as well. So they can copy these down and store them safely. If for any reason they can't log in using the two-factor authentication method. So let's keep it in this status. So it's only going to show if that status is set. And again, this is something Laravel stores on the user model, but it stores them encrypted and in JSON. So we need to loop over them, decrypt them, and JSON decode them. So let's just do that. So we can do a for each, and then we want to do a JSON decode, and then we want to do a decrypt, and we want to decrypt, and we're going into that auth facade again, user, and then from the database, we want to get the two underscore factor underscore recovery underscore codes. And then as a second parameter into decrypt, we want to call true, if we want this unserialized and then we want each one of them and I'll just call this one code as that makes the most sense and then we'll just end that for each so I understand this can look a little bit complex but it's actually not if you break it down into each section so just maybe pause the video and study what is actually happening here and then finally we just want to echo out each of them codes but firstly I'm going to call trim to remove any of the white space that might be there and then just print out that 
code. Then we probably want to put a bit more text here just to let the user know what's happening. So we can say, please store these recovery codes in a secure location. Okay, then as a final step, we will also create our disable button as well. So once we enable this, we can actually disable it. So up here, I'm just going to use this if else block here. I'm just going to copy this form as well. And I'm just going to put this form that we've created in the top if block here. So if two factor secret isn't set, then you can enable it. And then if it is enabled, I'm just going to paste this form in again. And we are doing a post to the same action, but we're going to send a delete method. So underneath the CSRF token, I'm just going to call method. And I'm going to make sure it's sending the method as delete. And then obviously, instead of enable on the button, we want it to say disable. So you've probably noticed here, I've made a bit of a typo. I've typed two factory recovery codes, when that should be two factor recovery codes. And also when I echo out the code here, I'm just going to put a BR tag. So it separates the codes out a little bit. Now that is everything that we need to complete this flow. So just to run over it, so we're all 100% sure what's going on. If the user doesn't have the two factor secret set on their table, we're going to show them this method here, which we're going to post to user two factor authentication. And that is going to enable the two factor authentication by filling them two columns in. But first, it's going to ask the user to confirm their password before it will do this. Once the user confirmed the password, it's going to return to this page and it's going to set a session status of two factor authentication enabled if it has worked correctly. And if it has, we're going to show them the two factor authentication QR code they need to scan. And then we're going to loop over the two factor recovery codes table column on the user table. I'm going to decrypt them and then print the code out onto the page so the user can copy them. So now let's try this flow in the browser. So I'm going to click the enable button here for two factor authentication. And then as you can see, this redirects us to confirm our password before Laravel 45 will enable the two factor authentication. So I'm just going to fill that in. And now this should redirect us back to our home page with the session status that we need to display out the QR code. So sometimes you may find it'll redirect you back to your page after you've done the password confirm and it's not enabled the two factor authentication. But not to worry, just hit that enable button again and it'll go through the flow and it won't ask you to confirm your password again because you already have. And then all going well, it'll return you back to the page and our two factor authentication is now enabled. It's given us a QR code and it's also given us our recovery codes. So the first thing I'm actually going to do, I'm not going to use these. I'm going to disable the two factor authentication just so we can make sure that delete method is working. So I'm just going to click disable. And you can see it's redirected us back to our home page. And now we don't see the QR code and we can enable it again. So let's just hit that enable button again. And you can see now this has regenerated a different QR code and different recovery codes. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is scan that QR code into my application. So on my phone, I use Google Authenticator, but you're free to use any application that you want for this. I'm just going to scan this QR code now. And what this does is it generates a one time token that refreshes every couple of seconds. The final thing as well is to copy these recovery codes and just record them down somewhere. And obviously for the purpose of this demo, these are just going to be thrown away, but I'm just going to record them down so we can actually test the recovery flow in case for any reason a user did need to reset their QR code using the recovery code. We just need to make sure that's working. Okay, so now we've scanned our QR code into our mobile phone application, and we've also copied our recovery codes. We just actually need to try this out. So before we can actually try this out, we need to put another configuration in our service provider. So let's just do that now. So over in our Fortify service provider, again, just like we've done with all the others, we're just gonna call Fortify. We're gonna call two-factor challenge view. And again, just pass this in a closure. And again, we're just going to return the view that's going to ask the user for their two factor authentication code. So we're just going to do a return view. And I'm going to put this under the auth folder again. And I'm going to call this one two hyphen 
factor hyphen challenge. Now I've just copied the password confirm blade view for this because it's almost identical again. Uh, the only difference is I've just changed the text up here to say please enter your authentication code at login. The post action needs to go to a URL of forward slash two hyphen factor hyphen challenge that you can see here. And the form only needs one input of type text and we need to give this a name of code. And then what happens here is you enter the code from your two factor authentication app and then this post is at code off to Laravel Fortify to the two factor challenge endpoint. And then if it matches, it will log the user in. So let's give this a try now in the browser. I'm just going to clear my cookie session here and I've just give a refresh. We go back to the login page. Now let's just try and log in. And now when we hit the login button, we should get our two factor challenge page. And then finally, we need to open our authenticator application and enter the code. So in my case, it's 558040. And I'm just going to submit that. And you see now we are logged in. So our two factor authentication has worked and the user is now authorized to use the application. Okay, so that works great. But what if the user has lost their phone, for example, or they can't access the application for any reason? and they want to use one of the recovery codes that was generated earlier. We need to set this up in the view. So I'm going to put this on the two factor challenge page. Now in a normal application, it is best practice not to show both of these options on the same page, or at least have one hidden and then allow the user to toggle between them using some JavaScript, for example. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to put them both on the same page for now. So I'm going to copy this form. And then let's just put a new paragraph here. I'm just going to say, enter your recovery code. And this also posts off to the two factor challenge page. But the only difference is on the input, instead of giving this a name of code, we need to give this a name of recovery underscore code. Now let's test how this works in the browser. So I'm just going to clear my cookies. So we're logged out again. Now I've logged in, I've reached a point of entering the authentication code. And like I said, normally you wouldn't show both of these at the same time in a real application. So work out with your front end framework the best way of doing that. And then we can enter one of the recovery codes that we stored earlier. Let's give this a try. So I'm just copying one of them codes and pasting it in. And then I'm going to submit this. And you can see now that has allowed us to log into the application without entering the QR code. So now we have a complete two factor authentication flow working. And we also have the fallback of the user being able to use the recovery codes. 